All right, welcome everybody to this call, to this Sunday evening call. So today we're going to have a slightly different um, approach to the call because today we are going to do more of an interactive call. We're going to talk about the 10 most common oils that we know and love in doTERRA. And many of us who are attending these calls are educators and we are sharing these oils in our communities. We're learning how to empower ourselves and empower other people using these oils. And so this is um, kind of like a demonstration or an example of how we could lead an online call, an online class for our communities. Um, and also deal with any kind of questions that, that come up. So in a way, it would be great for you guys to, to feedback and um, to give some kind of examples, if you like. So, you know, it could be any kind of problems that you're experiencing or things that you hear people talking about that they need solutions for, even if, even if, even if it might not be you know, your need necessarily, it would be great just to like get everything out on the table in this call so we can kind of um, figure things out together and figure out how we can help people find the best solution together. So I'm going to be sharing um, from a slide here, which is basically we're talking about the Home Essentials Kit or the Family Physician Kit, which we all know and love, and which is just a great intro kit. Um, for anyone that wants to start a collection, anyone that wants to start approaching a kind of a new form of healing using essential oils. So I'm going to share with you my screen. <clears throat> and let's just start from the beginning here. And yeah, please feel free to um, unmute yourself and just feedback at any moment, okay? So... Our herbal allies for the heart and home. So these are essential solutions for you and your family. And as I mentioned before, this is like a kind of example class that we can um, take with us to do one-on-one -on -one with people, that we can take with us into group classes or also Skype sessions, okay? So first of all, why essential oils? So let's pretend, um, let's assume that someone is just coming to this for the first time and they maybe have heard about essential oils, but they don't necessarily know what they are, okay? So what are essential oils? Well, they're natural compounds found in nature, which contain all of the healing properties of the plant. So I would say it's also like the lifeblood of the plant, okay? I would say that um, these plants, when they grow in the areas that they grow in, they have to fight off all the different um, kind of insects and repel certain insects so that they can survive in that environment. They have to deal with, obviously, maybe a lot of sunlight or very little sunlight, a lot of rain or very little rain. And all of those conditions that the plant grows in will um, create the chemistry inside and will feed into the chemistry of the oil that is in that plant. And so that will then, that oil will contain all of those healing properties. Um, one of the great things about essential oils is that they're lipid soluble. They're recognized by the body as being friendly and familiar. Okay. So it's not, we're not putting anything synthetic into our bodies. We're not putting anything chemical or foreign you know, we have grown since the beginning of time. Human beings have grown up alongside plants. We have grown with nature, in nature, from nature, and they have always accompanied us in our journey as human beings. So they are recognized as something friendly and familiar, and they are safe and potent at the same time, um, and they can be used aromatically, topically, and internally. Would any of you like to add anything to this at this point in time? Maybe just add that uh, the fact that they are lipid soluble is a very important characteristic because it determines a little bit of the, the way you use it. Because in order, like for example, to use it topically, because they are lipid soluble, they need to be diluted in another lipid, in another, uh, another oil, yeah. the carrier oil. I, yeah. think, I think that's, I mean, it's just a, a tiny thing. And then also I will mention the, 
the fact that they are they have a very low uh, or have they have a low molecular weight, which means that they are uh, they can be um, absorbed easily because they they, they they are not very complex in ter in terms of their molecular weight. Yeah, that's a great point. So we want to make a distinction as well between what essential oils are and what fatty oils are because sometimes there's the, some confusion over that when we're teaching people for the first time. They don't necessarily know the difference between, well, what's the difference between an essential oil and almond oil, for example. And so we can explain that, you know, that molecularly they're much lighter, um, they're much smaller, um, and therefore that's why they're called essential. They're very volatile. Okay, so they're going to penetrate through the body tissue into our circulatory system and therefore have access to all the organs of the body. So they're great points. Thank you, Belen. <clears throat> so just very quickly, so we just, um, in terms of how we can use essential oils, we're going to talk about how we can use them in three different ways. So unlike when you just buy a cream or when you just buy, you know, like some kind of salve or something to put on your lips, You've just got one way of using that particular substance, whereas with an essential oil, we've got three different ways. And so that's really important to understand. And it also gives us a really nice playground of ways to use the oil. So you've got some examples here. Topically, we can ap apply the oils directly to a cut or a burn. So we can apply it directly to our skin. Neat. Um, there are others where you'd have to mix them with a carrier oil and apply that to the skin. And the wonderful thing about applying, applying it with a carrier oil is that it's going to sit, it's going to stay for longer in the surface of the skin, okay? So when we apply it with a kind of coconut oil or an almond oil, it's going to sit in that skin tissue for longer, okay? So you can have a very healing effect on a cut or a wound in that way. Okay. Another way we can apply them topically is to the soles of our feet and the soles of our feet is a very safe area. So if you have children um, and you're not sure what to do, or where to apply the oil, the soles of the feet is always going to be a safe bet because they tend to be, it's like a thicker skin there. So it's not, um, it's less irritable. It's not going to irritate as much. But also it's very absorbent. The pores on the skin, on the soles of the feet are very absorbent. And that oil is going to penetrate through the soles of the feet into the circulatory system. And then another way, obviously, is through massage. Massaging oils directly into our muscles, into our um, joints to relieve any pain. Okay, so those are topical uses. Aromatic uses. Obviously, we can, um, as we all know, we can place some drops in the palms of our hands and inhale directly from our palms. That's a very, very quick and immediate way to get the oil into the respiratory system if you're having an asthma attack, if you're having um, any kind of congestion, that's going to really support you in a very immediate way. You can put some drops into hot water and do a steam inhalation that way. Or add some drops to your linen or your pillow um, or in a clothes wash. And even though, um, you know, if you add some drops in through the wash, even though that's going to be mixed with water, when you, when you bring those clothes out of the wash, it's still going to hold the aroma of that oil. It will still have some effect there. Uh, the aromatic effect or benefits will still remain. And one of the most potent ways that we can use the oil aromatically is in a diffuser. So um, we're not talking about a candle, a candle burner, like an oil burner. We're talking about a cold water vapor diffuser. And the reason why we use them in these kind of diffusers is because when you start to heat the oil up, you start to change the chemistry of the oil. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're holding on to all those incredible benefits, and that's why we use them in a cold water vapor diffuser. Another way you can use them <coughs> internally is adding some drops to your cooking to add flavor, and you would add those drops right at the end so as not to uh, burn away the oil. Okay, um, you can take a couple of drops under your tongue, that's another very uh, immediate way to receive benefits of the oils and get them into your system. Adding a couple of drops into an empty vegetable capsule and swallowing. And then using in smoothies, juices or water. 
Okay, so these are just, I just want to very quickly run through the three different ways that we commonly use the oils. Does anybody have um, any other ideas or suggestions about how we can use the oils that are not written here? Um, yeah, I, I was yesterday at the, um, like we had a, a post-convention meeting in Paris. Yeah, and I went to that and they said something very interesting. They said that when we had an aversion towards one oil, uh, we could actually carry the bottle in our pocket because uh, the same way that our phones just give uh, vibrations, the oils also have vibration and that we would get some sort of benefit just by carrying the bottle in our pocket. I think wow. it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. And I'm willing to just like try that because it costs nothing. Just put the bottle in your pocket and see what happens. So. Uh, I'll give it a try. That's really interesting. And why did they say that specifically for oils that we have an aversion to? Um, they were just saying that if we don't want to put them on us, mm. you know, for some reason, then we would just carry them around. But I, I would guess that the same thing would be beneficial for, with oils that we like, you know, yeah. same. But yeah. they just said that because, like, if we don't want to smell, they were mentioning, um, which one is it? Uh, forgive the forgive oil that yeah. apparently people don't like. I like it, <laughs> you yeah. know, but apparently people have a hard time with that one and they say to just carry it around. Right. So. Right. That's great. I'd love to hear about your, your experience of, uh, of doing that stuff. Maybe we Yeah, can... I thought it was interesting. So yeah. we'll see. It's like, it's almost like the um, kinesiology test, you know, when you hold the food in your hand mm -hmm. and they test you, they do like a muscle test yeah it's like just doing that energetically having it with you and seeing what the effect would be internally yeah that's a great yeah. one to try because often the ones that we have an aversion to are often the ones oh, the one that we need yeah <laughs> that's why they were saying that that's why we need to carry those in our pockets all the time yeah so. yeah great great suggestion mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you Okay, so here is uh, just some ideas about dosage. Okay, I'm just gonna shrink this slightly so you can see here <laughs> about the ideal amounts. And this is a chart that Dr. Hill created, who's the medical advisor of doTERRA. Um, so you can see here for aromatic use for adults and children, there's no ideal amount or, tw or maximum amount. You know, it's, um, we can be diffusing all day if we like. Um, you know, especially if we're wanting to have a kind of low and sustained intake of the oil um, to support our mood or to support our energy levels. Um, obviously, this changes quite drastically when you go to the internal use. So for an adult, the ideal amount is two to four drops per serving, okay? And then within a 24-hour time period, you'd be looking at between 12 and 24 drops maximum spread over that 24 hour time um, and then for a child one to two drops or three to 12 drops so internal here I mean we can we can um, like we can interpret this in different ways because actually for children really you don't need they don't need to be taking the oils orally you can see here in the on the lower um, lower down in this table that for children, there's no oral amount. So I would, um, with oral, that's, I would interpret that as in a capsule, taking the oils in a capsule. And internal use, I mean, obviously we're getting the oils internally when we're using it aromatically, you know? So through inhalation, that's an internal, that's a way of, in, you know, internalizing the oils. And I would say I, I'm, I'm interpreting this internal um, graph here or these internal dosages here as maybe in a smoothie, you know, a drop in a juice or a drop in a smoothie or a drop in, let's say you're making a, um, a salsa or a dressing or something or maybe in some uh, guacamole that you would, you know, that they would be ingesting it in that way because really... Um, it's the, the, the oils are so powerful uh, and effective that children will get a lot from just topical use and aromatic use. So if you have any hesitation or any um, nervousness around, you know, putting it in food or drinks for children, then just stick with, with aromatic and uh, topical use. 
And then oral, as I mentioned before, oral would be in a capsule um, and also under the tongue. And then dermal use is obviously topical use. So that would be um, putting it directly on the skin or in a carrier oil. And for children, we're always wanting to start with the oils quite heavily diluted and then just observing to see if there's any irritation or any reaction. Um, up until six years old, you want to always be diluting in a carrier oil. And then, you know, from six years onwards, you can, you can have a look. If it's a very kind of strong and robust child, you know, it might be absolutely fine to just put lavender or tea tree directly on their skin. There's not going to be a problem. But if it's a, you know, a very delicate child with very sensitive skin, then obviously you need to be diluting. So this is just a useful kind of, um, I guess, base, you know, kind of uh, base for us to work from. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to do is just talk about the common problems that we can um, treat using essential oils. So I'm sure many of us here um, watching this call now or later will have experienced at least one of these, if not all of them. <laughs> okay. So if you're leading a call or leading a class, um, a group class or an online class, you can ask people to just raise their hand and just say, you know, has anyone here experienced digestive problems? Is anyone, you know, experiencing stress? And try to get an idea about what people are suffering from so that you can then direct, look, be very directive in your class and you can say when you're talking about the oils, okay, Liz, you suffer, you know, you tell me you suffer from skin problems, right? You're going to really be interested in lavender and frankincense and tea tree. Um, you know, Sarah, you're telling me you're really stressed at work. These are the oils that are going to work for you. People want to receive personal information, personal examples and solutions. They don't want to hear about all of our problems and the way that we have solved our problems. So it's really um, great if we can just have a list in front of us and just ask people, you know, put your hand up if you, you know, suffer from allergies, put your hand up if you have any, you know, respiratory problems, and then you can get an idea. So, um, this is just a tip that I would recommend in any kind of class that we're leading so we can be very clear about the information we're giving. <clears throat> and then we just jump straight into the oils, okay? So lavender is obviously a favorite. It's uh, um, one of the oils that might be more commonly used. Um, even if uh, you know someone has no oil experience whatsoever, they will have heard of lavender oil and they most likely will have used it at some point in their life. Lavender can be used neat on the skin. It can be used internally and aromatically. Um, uh, but some people do have um, a kind of sensitivity to lavender. And this can be mistaken as an allergy, okay? Because sometimes sensitivity and allergies have the same kind of symptoms, but there's, you, we can't actually be allergic to lavender because there's no, we, we're allergic to proteins, okay? Usually if there's a protein molecule, there's an, a, 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 there can be an allergy to it, but lavender oil does not carry protein, okay? So this is really important. Yeah, Steph, go ahead. Um, my mom gets headaches from lavender. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? So it could be that she has a sensitivity, but it's not, it's not an allergy. Mm -hmm. um, and Dr. Hill spoke about this. Um, because allergies are caused by the protein molecule, having an allergy to that, and essential yeah. oils do not carry that. But we can be sensitive to an oil, and that can have very, very similar reactions or symptoms to an allergy. So can we, we can reverse that, no? By diluting it, maybe? And yeah. Yeah, yeah, so what I would suggest, if she's open to it, is you can dilute it heavenly and try it um, on the soles of her feet instead. Of, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Let's let's say she's put it all over her chest, and mm -hmm. then it's very very close to her head. It's very very close to her respiratory system, and there's a reaction. So yeah. instead, you could try. She could dilute it and put it on the soles of her feet and see. Um, or she could put a very small amount in a diffuser. Yeah. Just have that in the room that she's in and try mm -hmm. that. 
I mean, lavender is a, a really great oil for us to use yeah. and work with, but there are alternatives. You know, if she needs something for her skin, she can turn to frankincense or Roman chamomile or geranium. Um, if she needs something for sleep, she yeah, can... Yeah, it, it was for sleeping and I gave her the serenity and she loves it, so it's, it's fine. But um, like, she had, And she had an aversion. Since the first time she used it, she had a headache. Then she was like, I don't like the lavender. Yeah. <laughs> so I gave her something else and I tried the soles of the feet, but um, yeah, it takes time yeah. to... There's no need, we don't need to push an oil necessarily mm -hmm. because there's so many alternatives. Yeah, yeah. So for sleep, she could go to vetiver, she could go to Roman chamomile, she could mm -hmm. use um, petagrain as well. These are all alternatives. Yeah. Um, even, you know, sandalwood is a wonderful kind of se um, sedative as well. Um, but the cheaper ones are, would be Roman chamomile or petagrain or vetiver. Mm -hmm. um, but serenity, you know, it has lavender in it. Yeah, but it's it's such a small amount that she doesn't yeah. smell it. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's a um, sneaky way. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's it. As long as someone's open to exploring the possibilities, then you can try, you know, all those mm -hmm. options. Yeah. So that's great. You know, lavender is going to be great for sleep, um, for aiding sleep, for supporting sleep. And what I would say is that if there are sleep issues, if there is insomnia and if it's chronic, you don't want to just be using lavender in the moment that you go to bed. You need to be preparing yourself, you know, an hour before mm -hmm. sleep, turning off all your, um, you know, electric <laughs> and all your computers and your phones. You want to be having a nice bath, you know, reading, yeah. dimming down the lights and not with this, you know, this kind of glaring, these glaring lights or the glaring light of a computer. We want to be supporting our, our natural circadian rhythm and not just, you know, being in front of a screen until the moment we go to bed, mm -hmm. our eyes being totally stimulated by this false light and then dousing ourselves in lavender and lying in bed for three <laughs> hours waiting for it to work, you know? <laughs> so yeah. it's really about, you know, attending to yourself and tending to your needs in a very conscious way, you know. And like we always say with the oils, you know, it's about constant use and consistent use. If you want to uh, lose weight, you don't just do a diet for one day. If you want to get fit, you don't just exercise for one day and hope it works. You develop a regular, constant exercise routine regime you develop uh, a very healthy conscious health, health you know eating pattern to shed that excess weight or whatever it might be and it's the same with the oils we need to develop that conscious constant consistent use of them to to deal with whatever it is that we're wanting to deal with does anyone else have anything to add to that this moment i just wanted to just um confirm what you you guys are saying because I have that um, I used lavender initially for sleeping and when I found serenity I I, I just uh, I prefer because lavender has a, a very potent smell that it may it may be pleasant to you or it may be a little overwhelming and in uh, serenity since it's mixed up with other as uh, different oils like you know uh ilang ilang and other sweet sweet oils and i think that that's kind of like uh, makes it a little bit more um, less intense more more soothing more and that's why i like it but it's, it's a very person there's definitely a very personal subject yeah and that's wonderful too you know because we can personalize our treatments you know we can personalize our own healing journey with these oils um we don't just have to follow what somebody else does we can really find what works for us and work with our intuition and our instincts and i think that this journey is helping us to do is return to that that voice within return to that connection and listen you know hmm. um so I'm just quickly going to talk about um, some other benefits of lavender. Um, so for skin, it's going to be really, really useful for, our, for any kind of skin issues, for calming um, mosquito bites and the inflammation with mosquito bites and stings. 
for eczema, we can use it. We can use it for burns, cuts and rashes. And you can either put it neat on the skin, like we've said before, or you can dilute it. And then things like stress and, and depression as well. We can, it can be very, very supportive for any kind of mental strain or emotional strain. Um, and for teething, so those of you that are mummers, um, you can be using um, lavender along the jawline of your baby's face to help with teething, to help calm any inflammation and any discomfort with teething. So lavender is really a great all-rounder, okay? Let's continue, <clears throat> and we're going to go to one of my favorites here, frankincense, okay? This is the king of the oils. Um, it's really also, like lavender, a very, an oil, an all-rounder, one that we can use in many different ways. It's a natural antidepressant, and um, it's also being used in the fight against cancer. It stimulates our immune system. It has anti-infectious properties, anti-inflammatory properties. It's a natural antiseptic. But one of the main and most powerful ways we can use la uh, frankincense is as a, as a, it's ha for its regenerative properties. So it re helps to regenerate the cells. What it does is it works on a cellular level going into um, our cells to deprogram any erroneous information there. So it's really very, very helpful for cellular healing and then any kind of cellular um, abnormalities or cellular diseases. Um, so frankincense is a very, very powerful oil and it can be one that we can use on a daily basis. We can take it internally. We can use it aromatically and neat on the skin. Um, it's calming to the system, to the nervous system, but at the same time, it helps to center us. So it's kind of calming, but also centering and focusing at the same time. Um, does anybody here, has anybody here had a, a personal experience with frankincense that they'd like to share? Well, I use frankincense in all my um, lotions and, and, you know, face, face lotions and body lotions. And I use frankincense and geranium because I love both of them and they, they're both good for the skin. And I also use frankincense uh, diluted in coconut oil for my breasts because of uh, uh, the anti-cancer. Uh, properties. Great. Thank you, Belen. Yeah, so really important point there. Frankincense is great for the skin. Skin, skin uh, it can really help with wrinkles. It can really help to reduce fine lines. It's very healing for our skin. So any of you that are making beauty products or into, you know, natural face products and things, you can add this to your, your night cream. I've got, uh, I use frankincense. Um, hi everyone. I hi, use frankincense. Hi. Um, with my son who's had issues with his father, um, and it helps in the emotional book you read about how it helps with the healthy connection with your dad. And I've used it in times when he's been feeling really, really upset because he doesn't see him that often, et cetera, et cetera. And I find that that has really helped. Yeah. Kind of, he he thinks differently once I I, I burn, um once I diffuse it at night he just kind of it calms him down and he kind of works out a healthy connection with him rather than being angry so on the emotional level I found it really great for that. Wow, that's very yeah. powerful. Yeah, thank it's you. really amazing. Mm, thank, <laughs> you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Let's, uh, let's keep going through these oils. So we're going to continue um, to lemon, which is uh, also a really wonderful oil that we can use in many, many different ways. Um, again, here we have the three uses. You can use it neat on your skin, internally and aromatically. When you use it on the skin, just to be aware that the citrus oils are photosensitive. So they're going to have a reaction to sun, and there could be a possible staining or bleaching of the skin once you expose your skin to the sun after application, okay? So you want to be putting lemon on parts of the skin that are not going to be exposed to the sun or use it at night in your, in your skincare regime at night because paradoxically, even though it's not great to, to use on your skin during the day, 
lemon is actually very, very cleansing to the skin and can be make your skin shine, really um, increase the kind of shine and the brilliance of your skin. So you can use it in like a face scrub, for example, at night and then wash it off and then you put your normal cream on and you'd have those 8, 10, 12 hours in darkness before you expose your skin to the sun. Um, it's also, as you can see here in the list, it's also great for greasy and oily hair. So you can add it into your shampoo and conditioner and just help to remove if you have a tendency to have greasy hair and oily, like oily skin, oily hair, then you can use it um, in your hair care regime. And then, as I said before, it's because it's very cleansing to the skin externally. It's also going to be very cleansing internally. So for parasites, for any kind of um, liver or kidney issues, it's a digestive aid. We can use it in um, detoxes internally. You can take it in water or in smoothies or juices. Um, and on the emotional level, it's an antidepressant. So it's going to be very uplifting to the spirit and to our emotional um, body and our emotional uh, processes. Um, I know as well, it's, it's the oil of focus and it's very, very uh, supportive to anyone that has learning difficulties or um, difficulties in concentration, difficulties in completing tasks. Um, and, you know, maybe you're the type of person that starts many things at once, many different jobs and finds it difficult to finish one. Lemon is going to help you start and finish those different tasks and you can burn it um, or burn it. <laughs> you can diffuse it in the air um, when you're needing to have that focus at work. It's also great for cleansing air pollution and any kind of negative energy from the air. So in your work space, for example, if you are in an environment which is in an office or in an environment which is challenging emotionally, then you can diffuse lemon oil in the air and that's gonna kind of help cleanse any negativity or cleanse any kind of toxicity in the air. I'm just um, going through these oils very briefly because we're doing this, uh, this class as a kind of um, a way to teach about how you can teach. <laughs> so I'm wanting to keep it quite simple. I know that there are a lot of other ways that we can use these oils and I, I am aware that many of you have different experiences and can share a lot. Um, but I'm, you know, we have lots of people on our team who are training to educate on these oils at the moment, and I'm wanting to give them this example class without going too much into all the different ways because we'll be here for, for hours otherwise. <laughs> so let's go on to peppermint, which is another wonderful um, oil that we can use in many, many different ways. Again, we've got the three different ways of using it. We can use it aromatically, we can use it internally, and we can use it topically. But I would always say with topically, you want to do a, um, a sensitivity test first. Personally, I can use it directly on my skin without any, um, without any sensitivity issues, but there are many people who do have sensitivity and it could, you could get some, uh, some redness appearing. So I would say, you know, mix it first, dilute it first on the skin, um, and then see if, if there's any irritation there. The, 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 the reasons why we would use it on our skin are for cooling, cooling the skin. It's also a natural antiseptic and you can use it for respiratory issues. So if there's any lung issues, if there's bronchitis, if there's congestion, you can rub it into the chest area and that's going to help the lungs open and open up our respiratory system. And also it has a very, very powerful effect on the digestive system. So you can also rub peppermint onto your belly, or if you have a baby that has digestive issues, you can use peppermint heavily diluted on their belly to help cool um, any kind of digestive issues. As you can see here on the list, it's, uh, it's very helpful for IBS and Crohn's as well. And I know that I have people who use this, have friends who use this to treat IBS and they find it very supportive. They would use it internally 
um, in capsules and also externally rubbing it on their intestinal region, on their abdomen, when there's any discomfort there. Um, obviously, you know, you can read the list here. If we can use it for nausea and heartburn, you would take it internally for nausea, um, for motion sickness as well. And heartburn, we can rub it on the heart space or along our, along the, the trachea there. Um, for migraines and headaches, we would rub peppermint oil on our temples or on our forehead or the back of the neck. And also for chronic fatigue. So peppermint is very, very powerful when we use it aromatically. Just taking a drop in our hands and smelling it from our palms is a very powerful way to support any kind of fatigue. Um, we can mix it with lemon as well. And that's going to be a lovely combination there. Very uplifting, very bright, very sprightly, just to help wake you up. So that is peppermint, okay? Just a very brief outline of the, the ways we can use peppermint. And tea tree, tea tree, otherwise known as melaleuca. This is uh, sourced in Australia. And we can use this on the skin topically, internally, and aromatically. So melaleuca is a wonderful, wonderful oil for skin. Um, it's going to be very, very useful for any kind of acne and skin problems. You can put it directly on any kind of spots or acne. Um, you can use it for athlete's foot, any fungal issues, again, putting it on, on the tissue affected. And then for candida and thrush, and what I would suggest for those, um, for treating candida and thrush is you can put a couple of drops in your bath. And you can also take it internally, Melaleuca. You could take it in a capsule to help with uh, cleansing internally and um, helping just balance out the candida internally. It's also very good for parasites. We would use it internally for parasites. And it's known to be a common, uh, a common relief for nits, a, a deterrent for nits. And so we can use it in our shampoo, we can use it behind our ears, and that's going to be a very effective natural treatment for nits. Has anyone else had an experience with melaleuca that they would like to share? I have. Great. <laughs> I've had, well, Archie, my son, had really, really bad a fungus on his foot. And um, yeah, it just was spreading and spreading like you wouldn't believe. And after two days of applying uh, tea tree, melaleuca, sorry, onto the, onto the foot, I, we did it neat. Um, it literally within two days, the whole foot was completely better. Wow. So, yeah, found it amazing with the, the, with the fungal on the old feet. Very grim, but it definitely worked. Great. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. And you just applied it neat, Bun. Yeah, I applied it neat because um, I've put it neat on Archie before and, you know, obviously we don't have any, it hasn't had any skin, you know, reactions to it. But I think because it was sort of spreading quite fast and the foot was really red and really inflamed between the toes and you could just see it spreading. Um, I just thought, right, that's it. Put it on neat. And yeah, it worked an absolute treat. Yeah, so that, I mean, it's very common in kids to pick up these yeah. things when they go swimming or, you know, because if they're doing sports and things and, you know, sweaty feet. So you yeah. can also use it uh, in the swimming pool. You can use it after, after you go swimming and just using it on the feet after swimming. But it's also supposed to be really good, Melaleuca, for taking all the toxins and the chlorine out of our skin after swimming. So um, it really helps just draw all of that chlorine out um, after you've been in the pool for a while. So you can make like a body massage with it and, and you know, uh, do a full body um, treatment after you've been swimming with melaleuca just to, to get that chlorine out of the skin. So for all, your, all you swimmers out there. Yeah, that's interesting because Archie, he sw loves swimming and he gets instantly ill um, after swimming just got cold symptoms all the time so I'll try that because I do use the on guard for that but I'll try the melaleuca interesting 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think On Guard is going to be really supportive for him. But Melaleuca, I've heard that it specifically helps to draw the, the, the chlorine out of the body once again. Um, but yeah, swimming, you know, it's um, those pools that are uh, <laughs> uh, teeming with, with different, different bacteria and virus. <laughs> Um, all right, let's continue to oregano, one of the, one of the strongest oils, <clears throat> one of the ones that we need to take the most care with. And this is a natural antibiotic. It's one that we need to be more cautious with. We can't use it um, repeatedly for many days at a time. We can use it for b between seven to 10 days um, continually. And then we need to take a break. Then, um, you know, it, it really has a very strong effect upon the bacteria in our gut, the gut flora. So we don't want to be taking it for too much longer. We want to let our body have a break after that. And so if you're really needing to support your digestive system, your intestinal system, if you've got parasites and you're needing to do a long treatment, then I would alternate oregano with on guard rather than going for three months taking oregano. Does anyone have an experience with oregano that they'd like to share? Well, um, I, yeah, I can, uh, I definitely agree with the, the, the caution warning you were giving because I had a couple of experiences where people didn't react very well to it. That's, uh, you know, just to, to confirm that. But also uh, the experience I had with oregano was related to athletes' to food with my son. And I used oregano and I used melaleuca. And it was gone in two days and it's, it never came back. So, and it's, it's usually a very recurring problem, especially with boys and tennis shoes. But um, this was the most, it was extremely effective. It was um, um, unbelievable. Wow. And then I had people that had a lot of success with oregano, with um, cystitis. 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 Mm -hmm. It's a very good, it's a very effective oil too. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, you can, um, you can use it internally. Um, I would dilute it for internal use. Um, you can use it in capsules, diluted with some olive oil, or you can put it in a juice, but it's very, very strong. So my personal preference is to put it in a capsule and dilute it in some olive oil. And I would use oregano internally in circumstances where I need a bit of a, um, an immune boost, where I'm feeling like my immune system is compromised. Um, it can also be very, very supportive for a spiritually um, kind of for tender. If you have a tendency to suffer from congestion, from lung problems, um, from bronchitis, things like that, you can use oregano internally to support you with that. Um, it can be used aromatically, although I'm not sure how many people would want to put it in a diffuser, but you might want to, <laughs> um, if you want everyone, you know, at a party, if you want everyone to leave, you can put oregano in the diffuser. <laughs> um, and you can use it on your skin, but again, it would be to dilute it on the skin. In terms of use on the skin, I know people who've had a lot of success using it on warts and verrucas to eliminate those on the, on the skin. Um, and as, a, as um, an antiseptic, an antibacterial, and an antifungal. And in the case of, of those issues, you know, like Belen and Bonnie have said, um, for using it for things like athlete's foot, but you can also use it, for example, if there's an internal infection, let's say um, I actually, a friend of my mother's had a hip operation, a hip replacement, and I think she was using oregano externally on the hip area, massaging it in so that it would help with calming or um, preventing any infection. Okay. So these are the single oils, <clears throat> and we're going to move on now to some of the blends, some of the most useful blends for the family. Um, and one of them is called On Guard. 
And this is a very, very um, useful blend, especially now in this change of season, we're moving into autumn and winter. This is gonna be really supportive for our immune system. So it's an immune stimulant and it contains what we would call hot oils, okay? So clove bud, cinnamon bark, um, they're two of the more kind of oils that are going to be warming to the body. They're going to create heat internally. So very good if you have a tendency to be cold. Um, wild orange is going to be uplifting. Rosemary and eucalyptus as well are going to be uplifting. So this is one that we can use internally um, in water, in juices, smoothies, in capsules. Um, topically, you're going to want to dilute it on your skin. As I mentioned before, it's got hot oils that could potentially irritate. And then aromatically, it's going to be really supportive to kill any airborne bacteria, any toxins in the air, any pollution. It's going to be uplifting for you. Um, and what's lovely is it also smells like Christmas. So it's kind of got that very um, warm and just familiar kind of um, homey sm smell to it. They're using this oil in hospitals um, in the UK and in the States to, for MRSA, to stop the spread of MRSA, which are these kind of super bugs, these hospital bugs. Um, it's very cleansing. You can use it um, also as aromatically to combat mold. Um, and it's going to be very, very good, very supportive for cold, cough and flu symptoms. So if you have children, if you have young children, I would be rubbing this on the soles of their feet every day before school. Um, you can also put it in a spray and spray it onto doorknobs. Um, you, can, you can use it on surfaces to clean your surfaces. Um, it's just going to be very, very effective for killing any kind of bacteria that's lingering around. So that is one that I would highly recommend for the whole family, but especially for children who tend to pick up a lot of um, bugs and viruses. And Deep Blue is another lovely, lovely blend that we can use um, for supporting our physical body, like mus muscular aches and pains, okay? So this contains wintergreen, and wintergreen, I'm just gonna reduce this slightly so you can all see. Wintergreen we source from Nepal, and it's a really wonderful project out there because, um, you know, doTERRA have this co-impact sourcing model whereby they really try and work with people who need work. So they go directly to the communities and the local farms and the local people who carry the wisdom and the knowledge of the plants, but who don't have um, the structure, the infrastructure available or set up so that they can actually make a living um, and support their family from, from farming these plants. And so, um, wintergreen is farmed and, and grown in Nepal, whereas we know it's, it's a developing country, there's a very low economic kind of level of living. And what's wonderful is that doTERRA, you know, are able to find these plants there, source them there, and create jobs for many, many people. And they've gone in again after sourcing wintergreen, they've gone in again and spoken to the local people and they've now found another wonderful oil, spikenard, which is sourced from there. They've been able to build, I think it was a hundred homes or more than a hundred homes for the farmers after the earthquake that happened in Nepal, building schools, helping the local people to, to survive and to, to thrive basically. So it's really wonderful that Wintergreen is sourced from there and that there's this um, incentive, this opportunity um, there for the people. It also contains camphor, peppermint, blue tansy, German chamomile, helichrysum and osmanthus. <clears throat> And this is not for internal use, okay? So there are very, very few oils that we can't take internally, and this is one of them. Um, and mainly you're gonna be using it for all kinds of joint and muscular pain, arthritis, um, rheumatoid arthritis, back pain, bone pain, muscle tension. Anytime, you know, if you've got a crook neck, um, if you have a tendency to have sore shoulders or sore knees, 
you can use this throughout the day to relieve any kind of pain. It's going to be um, very soothing to our muscle tissue. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, it's going to help with any kind of bringing blood to an area where there's sort of blockages there. Is anybody um, using Deep Blue and has any commentaries on it? I, I use Deep Blue Rub, the, the, the other, it's not in the image. I use it for my knees before and after running and it's very soothing and very, I mean, it's, 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 a, good, it's a good addition. It doesn't get rid of the problem exactly, but it does, it does provide some soothing and comfort so it's good yeah I like, I like it very much i have um a student who was taking paracetamol every day for hip pain she has a hip replacement and when she started to use deep blue she stopped taking paracetamol altogether and she only takes it maybe once a month now so it's amazing it's been an amazing support for her because she's been taking paracetamol for the last 10 years every day and it's really no good you can't go on like that and now she just uses Deep Blue and, you know, very occasionally, maybe, I don't know, if she's been traveling and sitting, you know, sitting down a lot, that she might take a paracetamol then. But she's, for her, it's changed, changed the quality of her life. Does anybody else want to share? Um, well, my, my brother has been having like chest pain for about 10 years now and it's unexplained so it's things that that keeps him from breathing fully um and that's obviously very upsetting because it touches his breath but um he's been having contractions and, and inflammations all over his chest because of that unexplained pain that's been going on for 10 years and so all his back is just like cramping because he's protecting himself from breathing deep and I started uh, giving him deep blue when I came back from the States, so about back in June. And he's putting that like um, diluted every single day on his back. And it seems to be helping. So we're testing and seeing if, if that helps. Um, he goes through phases, but he's sticking with it. And, and I think it takes time. So we'll see how it goes for him. Wow. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's for chest pain, you say, chest pain and trouble breathing. He has, well, he has chest pain that has been unexplained and like it probably comes from something in his rib cage, but doctors don't really know where it comes from. And since he has those chest pains, like he doesn't breathe as fully as he should. Mm -hmm. So his body is just contracting in many different places. And especially his back is taking the toll because that's, you know, he's contracting all his muscles to not breathe. <laughs> Uh, that deeply so yeah yeah it's more on his back like all the the shoulders and back pain that he's been having because of that breathing issue and do you think he would be open to looking at the emotional root cause of that that's what I'm starting to point with him like I'm, I'm he needs to look at that but that's in the early stages for him yeah so yeah you know there's a wonderful app i want to show you yeah i mean i have the emotional book and i actually gave him petit grain for yeah. that reason uh yeah. because it has something to do with generational issues and i think that's something that we need to like look into for him yeah. so he's starting to use petit grain i gave him that about three weeks ago maybe um and yeah we're beginning to look into the emotional cause, but it, it takes him a lot of time to accept to go there. Yeah. So from far away, it was difficult for me to work to help him with that. But I actually, so I moved back in June to France and he moves to Paris in September. So just at the beginning of the month. So now we, we're actively working on that together. So we'll yeah. see where it goes. That's mm -hmm. great. There's yeah. also a really nice um, book called You Can Heal Your Life by Louis mm -hmm. Hay. By, by who? Louise Hay. Oh, yeah. Okay. And she, there's an app, okay, that, that you can download, which is mm -hmm. on her book. I'll just show it here to you. It's called The Essential Emotions. I book. have that one. Yeah. Yeah. So you can look at lungs and what they represent. And okay. What it says here is ability to breathe in life. 
Mm -hmm. um, ability to release emotion. So when there's a lung issue or a breathing issue, the question is, do I feel suffocated by a life event? Am I, do I feel safe to take in life? Mm -hmm. And the, the emotions related with it are betrayal or feeling betrayed, grief, loss, or rejection. Yeah. And so then what's interesting in terms of treating with oils is that then you can look up the, the emotions. So you, let's, let's say he identifies with grief, for example. Then you can go to grief. And you can look up what might be supportive for him, for, like in terms of the plants. So he mm -hmm. talks about basil, cedarwood, um, helichrysum, the comforting blend. So then you can kind of not just work on the physical level. But the emotional too, yeah. The emotional as well. And sometimes, um, because I heard a story about a woman who was suffering with chronic pneumonia. Mm -hmm. She was just using the breathe blend the whole time for the respiratory system. But then when she looked at it from an emotional level, actually aroma touch, the aroma, yeah. um, I think it's called aroma touch, the blend. That was There's one. That was more relevant to her emotionally. So she stopped with the breathe and just started using the aroma touch and it was cured mm -hmm. within three days. Yeah. Also, sorry, can I add something? Um, also, maybe uh, my mum, I got her white fur for generational healing. She's had a few, just, they're not really serious, but just um, things that have been passed down in our gener her generation of her family. She, um, but white fur seems to be really, mm -hmm. really helpful as well. It's um, just breaking patterns and, um, yeah, burdens and stuff like that. So I don't know, that might be quite interesting to try as well. But my mum really enjoys it. I, it's not the nicest smell, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> I actually use white fur for me and I get him put it grain because it's friendlier for men. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like the, the men's lavender, isn't it? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. But yeah, so but I'm like, yeah, well, you know white fur then. There you go. Yeah. And it's interesting. Yeah, thank you. Really good to hear about all the different options. Um, all right, so we're going to finish up. There's just a couple more to go here. And I just want to share, let me see. Oops, hang on. Um, let me move this over here somewhere. <laughs> Digest Zen. So this is another one. So we, you know, we have so many people suffering, suffering with digestive issues. Um, because our food is, you know, it's difficult to eat well. It's, you have to be, really take time and energy and um, be conscious about buying good food. And when you're out, it's not necessarily so easy to eat what we need to eat, what we'd like to eat. So Digestin can really support us with any digestive discomfort, with bloating, with constipation, diarrhea, food poisoning. You can use this internally in capsules. You can use it if you have acid reflux. So you can take it in capsules as well. And it also comes in capsules. So you can buy it as an oil or you can buy it in capsules. It contains ginger, peppermint, tarragon, fennel, caraway, coriander, and anise. Um, and this is one as well that um, my sister used quite frequently during pregnancy because she had a lot of acid reflux. So it's safe to use during pregnancy. Um, you can use it for nausea, for parasites, and also for any kind of more chronic issues like IBS and Crohn's. And obviously the digestive blend is going to be most beneficial for us to use internally, but it will definitely have an effect uh, topically and aromatically. You can rub it on your belly or rub it you know, on a child's belly diluted if they have digestive discomfort and even aromatically even if you know you just need it in a very very small amount you can put it in the diffuser and it's going to give you that constant sustained support throughout the day so that is digest zen <clears throat> and then we're going to finish with one of my favorites which is breathe okay again this is not for internal use we don't use this one internally this contains laurel, peppermint, eucalyptus, melaleuca, which is tea tree, lemon, raven, sara, and cardamom. 
okay and really this is what this does what it says on the tin basically this is going to really support your your respiratory system any kind of congestion any kind of blocks tightness contraction in the respiratory system any emotional issues that are affecting your respiratory system panic attacks anxiety um, if there's nervousness and you know you can feel your your breath being it's challenging to breathe you can use this to support you it's going to support you know more serious issues like pneumonia um, sinusitis bronchitis all of the itises the viruses um, and yeah, we would use this, you can use it like you would, if any of you know Vicks Vapor Rub, you can use this on your chest, diluting it on your chest and on, for children, it's going to be really supportive in the diffuser overnight is a great way to support our respiratory system. If you have a child that's very, very snotty, or if you really suffer with asthma and congestion, you can use it in the diffuser overnight while the body is resting to make sure that your, your respiratory system is open and you're getting that oxygen that you need to rest well. <clears throat> Does anybody have, uh, would anybody like to share about this before we finish the call? So, well, thank you all so much for your, um, for your contributions it was really great i'm going to stop the share here <clears throat> thanks sarah and just come back to to the screen so i hope that for those of you that are starting out and giving classes and starting to share with your community this gives you a really great example of how you can just do a very very simple online class for someone and help them understand the 10 most basic oils it's really great for us to enter into dialogue with people for us to ask them what are they wanting to treat what what kind of support do they need we need to be hearing from people we need to be um knowing you know what what problems they're they're dealing with they're working with so that we can provide clear information for them and education um you know those of you that are attending this call and are just new to this i always say this but modern essentials is a great book to buy as a reference guide it's kind of oils bible okay and then the emotions book, emotions and essential oils. So these are the two books that you really want to be using and working with. And you can get them from a website called Four Oils, F O R Oils. And that's a European website that you can order these books from. Um, so it's, yeah, it's time for us to go. Did you have something, Steph? Do you want to say? Just one thing. If you guys have people who are French speaking in your team, like we heard yesterday that the Modern Essentials book is going to be translated in French, finally. Yay. So we'll have it by convention in May, um, by the, the European convention. That's wonderful. It's great news. Yeah. Really great news. Yeah. I know it's translated into Spanish, but mm -hmm. it's not the best translation. Oh, really? But it is there. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, you, you can pretty, you can understand what they're trying mm -hmm. to say. Um, it's also in Dutch and German and Italian, I think. So yeah, because yeah. we don't have it yet. And wow. it's great in English, but like we, for clients, it's good in French. Yeah, that's great news. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, thank you all so much for your contributions. Are there any, any other questions or, you know, comments before we leave? Tara, just with your sharing the screen business, did you do those yourself, your little lavender and... I did. I did. I, I can send you this, Bonnie. I can send you this class. That would be really great, actually. I really liked it. Thank you, darling. Okay. Absolute pleasure. So thank you all so much for being here. And um, thank you. we're going to have hopefully a VESA teaching on the call. So um, we'll meet again next week, same time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Bye.